Greetings, future fleet commanders. Have you ever run into this extremely common and frustrating problem? It feels all too common. You're at the helm of a powerful cruiser armed with massive guns, yet the enemy effortlessly withstands your firepower and then proceeds to fold you like a lawn chair. Well, fear not, because by the end of today, you'll be doing the folding. Welcome to Torpedo Bombing 101. Before we start, it's worth noting that this course is recommended for officers ranked ensign or higher who have had their introduction to basic Navy tactics, shipbuilding fundamentals, and modern missile warfare. Without further ado, let us begin. Let's first start with the ships that we'll be using in our task force. As the name implies, this task force revolves around using torpedoes to strike down the enemy's most dangerous ships before they have time to react or defend themselves, hopefully crippling the enemy's offensive capabilities right there and then. For this, we'll need a combination of speed and firepower, making the Vauxhall class light cruiser the ideal ship for the job. So head down to your quartermaster and requisition two of them. They'll form the entirety of your task force. You want me to give you what? I only need two of them. Oh, uh, uh, once you've convinced the quartermaster to give you what you need, make sure your ships have been optimized to move fast, but be as sturdy as the warship grade alloy that they were constructed from. For optimal performance, give them the whiplash engine assembly for maximum speed, and reinforce everything. Their thruster nozzles, magazines, DC lockers, both of their CICs. Make sure to give them a robust point defense grid and electronic warfare suite. Optionally, give one of them a long-range radar and intelligence center to know exactly who you'll be dealing with in advance. And finally, equip four of the primary mounts with Class 3 missile launch tubes of any type. Now let's move on to everybody's favorite part, the weapons we'll be working with. Head back to that quartermaster who you just annoyed and requisition enough class 3 torpedoes to fill every launch tube on both of your ships. This should be about 48 total. In terms of design, make sure the warhead and fuel tanks take up about equal space in the body and set the engine to maximize burn duration. Next, switch the avionics package to cold launch mode and top it off with a corkscrew terminal maneuver. The seekers and support slots are really up to you, but I recommend either command or optical guidance to maximize hit probability, with a boosted self-screening jammer to scramble the enemy point defenses. As I'm sure you're aware, only a few successful torpedo strikes are needed to severely cripple an enemy capital ship, making your seemingly small task force a formidable asset on the battle space. As shown in this video, a final advantage of command and optical guidance is their ability to discriminate between targets. Unlike simpler radar-guided and heat-seeking missiles, which simply home in on the most enticing target, optical and command guidance will home in exclusively on the targets that they were launched against. So when faced with a squadron of enemies all approaching at once, target your torpedoes on each individual ship one after the other to take down the entire enemy squadron easily and in a matter of seconds. If you're quick, you can end the battle before it even begins. Now let's talk about the tactical options that you'll have at your disposal when you enter the battle space. There are two main strategies for this type of setup. The first involves setting up an ambush, while the second involves hunting down the enemy directly. Let's start with the first one. Once you come out of D-Cell, have a look around the battle space for interesting locations that the enemy might want to capture. Areas like space stations, weapons depots, or even simple strategic points. Next, head over and set up an ambush. This involves positioning your ships close to naturally occurring cover, such as asteroids, comets, or other celestial bodies in order to mask their radar signatures and make them harder to detect. Ideally, you'll want the enemy to see you as late as possible, while you yourself anticipate their arrival. With some luck, your opponents will arrive either in formidable numbers or as high-value targets worth a lot to the enemy team. When that happens, jam their sensors with your electronic warfare devices, set your engines to flank speed to close the gap into firing range, and then obliterate them with as many torpedoes necessary to score kills. At such close ranges, any sort of enemy counterattack could inflict catastrophic damage upon your ships and cause significant loss of life. For this reason, it is imperative you not allow the enemy to mount a counterattack at all by sinking their vessels where they stand. To confirm your kills, look for things like oil clouds and ships launching their lifeboats. In the example that you're seeing on screen now, the two Vauxhalls employing ambush tactics were able to successfully attack an OSP formation near an Alliance space station. 
Thanks to their good positioning, they were able to catch their enemies completely off guard and disable or destroy every single ship in the enemy formation while only sustaining minor hull damage themselves. You'll notice how the enemy point defense weapons fall silent as soon as these torpedoes launch, as their self-screening jammers were able to prevent the enemy point defenses from effectively targeting them. As a result, nearly all of these torpedoes were able to effectively strike their targets, inflicting vicious damage in a very short amount of time. A final thing to be aware of, make sure to stay well away from targets that you recently damaged. Their reactors may have been punctured and might go critical at any second. You do not want to be caught in the blast, so stay at least 2 kilometers from the closest target ship. Now let's move on to our second strategy, turning your task force into the tip of the spear and driving it into the heart of the enemy. For this, we will enlist the help of our allies to identify high-value targets among the enemy ranks. Currently, high-value targets are things like Ocelo-class command cruisers and of course the militarized bulk freighters and container liners that we've become all too familiar with. Once the target's position and heading have been revealed, head over to intercept them in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Remember to stay close to cover at all times and try to remain undetected by enemy radar and elint for as long as possible. This will give you the best odds of success. As before, once you've closed to within torpedo range of your selected enemy ship, engage to destroy with as many torpedoes necessary. If done properly, the destruction of your chosen high-value target will cripple both the combat effectiveness and morale of the enemy fleet. It may even force their remaining forces to regroup or fall back, immediately placing the enemy on the defensive and allowing you and your friendly forces to gain complete control of the battle space with ease. Regardless of whether you decide to ambush your enemies or go on the hunt, once your missiles are inevitably spent, regroup with the rest of your fleet and secure any key points of interest that you may have encountered. Furthermore, if you have a couple torpedoes to spare but not enough to launch a full-on offensive, you can use it to destroy the enemy scouts. Most, if not all, Clipper and Corvette-class ships immediately fold to just one or two strikes. Congratulations, this concludes today's tutorial and you now have your Torpedo Bomber certification. While this was by no means an exhaustive list, you now know the fundamentals of what it takes to successfully emerge victorious as a Torpedo Bomber fleet. I recommend trying it against your peers in simulators first to see if it suits your command style. Should you choose this strategy, be sure to report any successes and or failures to the Naval Office. Your feedback is important to us and helps improve future tutorial videos. In our next tutorial, we will learn how to properly synergize torpedoes with other types of vessels, such as Keystone-class destroyers and Axford-class heavy cruisers. Until then, see you in the Battlespace, Commanders!